Baby, lay on back and relax. Kick your pretty feet up on my dash. No need to go nowhere fast. Let's enjoy right here where we at. Who knows where this road is supposed to be? Hi everybody, back once again with part two for art eight. Um, last week I asked you to do the word art assignment where I asked you to design some custom lettering by thumbnailing and doing a sketch and then drawing some things that you like and using overlapping to arrange a composition that was very you know, original. Um, so these were the goals like original lettering and overlapping um, and I asked you to ask, add color if you could um, but I had three that I thought were really good some of the first ones that I got and I'm showing them right now here in the video I hope you like them there were many good ones and I'm still waiting for some to come in if you're getting some work in late you know I understand we're just getting used to this and we'll really get the system down where it's just like that for us after a couple okay so no worries if you turn it in late I'm not gonna be mad at you or anything by all means I'll just get it in you know I gotta get it done it can be hard to get motivated sometimes in a new circumstance anyway this time we're gonna be looking at one point linear perspective one point linear perspective is kind of self-explanatory in the term it's one point call it the vanishing point it's linear meaning it has to do with a line or in relationship to using a line linear and perspective like your point of view like in your perspective maybe your room is just the way you want it you know from your mother's perspective maybe it's a mess it's like but I got everything just where I want it it's like yeah but there's socks all over the floor you know what I mean but when I say perspective that's a different kind of use of the word perspective but think of it from one viewpoint your viewpoint, wherever your your eye is looking at that moment, where your eye is looking at that moment establishes where the horizon is, which is where the sky meets the ground. And if you look into the distance, it's 20 miles away if it's perfectly flat, like if you're in the desert, where the curvature of the earth actually starts to curve away from you. So if we're on a great big ball and you're standing here on the ball, you can look straight out and eventually that beam of that that laser beam of your eyesight is going to hit the arc of the ball and that's where your vision is cut off that's as far as your eye can see if the earth was flat there would be no such thing as a horizon so all you flat earthers out there sorry but i had to bust your bubble anyway there's a there's a million things we could learn about perspective but we're just going to try to keep it narrow this might be the first time probably first or second time you've ever done anything having to do with it. So let's just get the basics. Let's look at some examples right now. So the very first one I think of is Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper. Everybody knows this painting and it's it's so explicitly uses one point linear perspective that's not even funny. Once you know it, you can't unsee it. It's all it really is. Uh, much later in time, like in the 1930s, 1950s, was doing these paintings. I'm sure you've seen these before, too, uh, in, in the vein of surrealism, where it's kind of like a fantasy drawing. It's, it uses the, the concepts and the constructs of a uh, real painting, a real drawing, but it's all make-believe. And nobody had ever done anything like this before, before uh, Salvador Dali or like Rene Magritte. These guys are... Uh, a groundbreaking artist. Anyway, here's Salvador Dali's The Disintegration of the Persistence of Memory. You can see the perspective really, really explicitly in this painting. And then you probably know the persistence of memory much better. I'll share with you, I saw the, this painting, The Persistence of Memory, uh, this, just this past um, winter. I was in New York City on a, on a study tour. And that painting's only like this big. <laughs> I couldn't believe how small it was. I always thought it was like a great big 
It's only like this big, right? It's like, oh, this is it? This is all it is? But it was small, but Dolly painted all kinds. He, was, he, he painted so much stuff, and he was very prolific. Uh, big ones, small ones, uh, medium-sized paintings, but I always thought it was bigger. Anyway, so one-point perspective can be found starting around uh, uh, 1420s, like just before Christopher Columbus discovered America. It's, a, it's considered a Renaissance concept. Although they say it was rediscovered by uh, Filippo Brunelleschi because, um, you know, if you know your history, you know there's antiquity, just like the Greeks and the Romans, the, the Golden Age. There was the Dark Ages where uh, learning kind of fell apart, you know, academics, you know, poetry, music, art, all of this stuff kind of went downhill. And then the Renaissance means rebirth. It's the rebirth of all these things. So Runeleshi probably uh, maybe saw this in some old Roman paintings or something and adapted it. Or you can, there's a video about it that you should watch. I'll, I'll add a link to it that really explains it well. But he was just trying to find a way to draw buildings accurately um, and ex make an exact uh, uh, representation of a building, and it worked out perfectly. And everybody uses it now. Uh, so. Let's do it. I'll show you how to do it. All right, so what do I need to get this done? Let's have a blank piece of paper. I'm using printer paper because I assume you have some of this. If not, use any paper you have. But this size, notebook paper, printer paper is good. You can go bigger if you want, but I'm going to use this. It'll be easier for you to follow along with the same size I have. I gave you these uh, terms here. I'm going to go over them now. I also gave you a diagram. You can find these as attachments in the Google Classroom assignment. Um, the diagram is good to have if you wanted to print it or just keep it up on your computer screen as a reference. Uh, the terms list, it's, it's some of these you like, yeah, I know, I know what uh, the horizon is, Mr. Nailitz. It's just the line I talked about earlier where the sky meets the ground. You probably never heard of the term orthogonal or orthographic. Uh, orthogonal line is a line that um, is perpendicular to another line. So, like if I look at this book, if I'm looking at this book straight on like this, um, this would be the x axis, the width, or the, going this way, the y axis is going up. And then the Z axis is going away from me. But if I turn it this way, this is still a right angle, just like this is still a right angle. And I'm showing this on this term list on the bottom on the image. Um, although it isn't showing up here on my paper, it's on yours and it's here in the video. Um, so that's an orthogonal line. But it, when we do a one point linear perspective drawing, this is the orthogonal line. It's this was the edge of the book, remember that? And this is going away from me, you know, it's diminishing in size, it's disappearing as it goes closer to the horizon. Um, so that's why it's diagonal. So, vertical, we know this is perpendicular to horizontal, so if this is horizontal, this is vertical, I think everybody knows that, so that's those three. An oblique line just means a diag like a it's not either, it's not this way, it's not this way, it's not this way. It's going in another direction. You can remember the term, the obliques, these muscles here that go like this. It's because they go diagonally at a slant that they're called the obliques. So an oblique line is just a diagonal line, slanting or sloping line. Take the time to read these, you know. I try to make them very simple, easy to digest, but if you don't take the time to actually read something, good luck. Um, parallel, we know, is two lines that will never match up. They'll never touch, I shouldn't say match. But if this is train tracks or a ladder, um, we know these lines, they never touch. They're always the same distance apart. And that's the definition of parallel. They go in the same direction. They'll never converge and they'll never diverge. Okay, they're not divergent or convergent. They're parallel. Um, when we draw uh, these same train tracks in linear perspective, we set up a horizon 
and they go like this and they actually do converge in the viewer's eye. So we go like this, the same thing, and it's going away from us. Here's the train tracks. I don't think I'll take the time to draw the train, although it would be fun here. Oh, now, now you got me wanting to do it. Here's the train, the smoke coming towards you. And this is the way you would draw it if you're drawing a cartoon or, or something like this. Um, you would use linear perspective. Uh, so one point perspective is the drawing method that shows how things appear to get smaller. They diminish in size as they go further away and they converge towards a single vanishing point which is just determined by where your eye is looking on the horizon. The horizon is, can be high or low depending on if you're looking up or you're looking down or you're looking straight on. For this one we're looking kind of straight on and slightly up for the drawing we're going to do. And that will determine how much you can see and what you see in your work of art. Um, I always say when I teach this, like, you don't have to use linear perspective in your paintings or drawings or illustrations, but a good artist, a strong artist, should know how to do it if they want to. Okay. So when I teach stuff, I'm not saying be a certain way, do this my way, because this isn't my way. This is a lot of people's way, but you know that's when your aesthetic judgment comes into place. Like, should I use perspective on this or shouldn't I use it? It's up to you, but you should have the option. You should have that weapon in your arsenal um, if you want to use it. So let's go and start. This is our practice drawing. Uh, say practice because it's the practice that you're going to do to help you understand how to do a real drawing. I'm going to ask you to draw your house. Um, give you a chance to go outside, but let's just get this done right now. Um, so take your paper and you need the ruler now. I'm going to ask you to measure down two inches. Measure, make a mark on each side. This is going to be where the horizon is. Draw a line. Draw all your lines pretty lightly. Just light enough so you can see them in case you want to erase. Um, I want you to go in again two inches from the right, two inches from the bottom. This is going to show where the front of the house is. We're drawing like a very simplified house. I'm just going to make those lines. I'm not taking the time to measure them. Let me, let's get them established first. Okay, That's the corner, lower right hand corner if you look at your example sheet. Right there. It's really close to the diagram I gave you. I want this to be a 3 inch by 3 inch square. Now what linear perspective does is it changes the shape which has length and height, height and length, or width and height, and uh, changes it into a form which has depth. So, you know, when we measure a uh, square, it's uh, length times width, and if we measure a cube, it's length times width times depth. Can we say it that way? So, x axis, y axis, z axis. I hope you learned this in math, but if you didn't, you're learning it in art. This is the z-axis that I'm about to draw. I have this, so 3 inches by 3 inches, it's 2 inches in, 2 inches up, the horizon is 2 inches down, let me clean this up. Following, you know if you get behind it's nice, you can just pause the video. It's like raising your hand. I would stop everything for you. If you raise your hand, this this uh, video pauses like a hand raise. So this time I'm going to go in three inches this way and make an X on the horizon. Okay. Three inches in here. This is all just random choice by me. So when I'm drawing it this way, it's as if I'm sta kind of standing over here, looking here, and the house is over here on my right a little bit. You'll have to position yourself in the right place to see a little bit of the side of your house if you stand out in front of it. If you stand right in front of the house, you can't see the sides, Okay, even though they're there. So now I'm just going to connect from 
each corner that I would be able to see and make a line. You can already see it starting to look like a cube. Like this is where your artistic ability has to come into play. I have to decide if this is a cube, although most houses are not a cube, they're usually like a longer rectangle, so maybe we'll do that. Is that what I have on the diagram? Yeah, it's kind of a little bit wider here. I'm looking at this as the front on this drawing. So, let's see, how far should I go? I just take my ruler and I just keep pushing it out. I keep it parallel to this line. And then I'll just cut the edge of the house off right there. That's what I decided. If that is there, remember this this setup back here is just a clone of this one back here. So if this was a clear house, a glass house, heaven forbid you had a glass house, you'd need a lot of curtains. Um, if this wall back here is actually the exact same size, if I draw the whole entire thing, as this front wall, it's just back further so it gets smaller. Of course, it's not a glass house, so I can't see this line, or this line, or this line. But I know they're there, and they help me find other lines, like this corner back here. If I draw all that in, I know that's where that corner is, but I think I have enough anyway, just by doing this one, and this one. Make sure you keep on that vanishing point when you draw this, or it will not work right. If you if your things your lines don't line up, you're like what's wrong? It's like you didn't keep it right on the vanishing point. It'll still look pretty good but it won't be perfect. Okay, there there we go. That's the bottom story of this house. Super simplified house. Maybe we'll do this drawing. I don't know if this will be enough. It might be too easy for you. Let's see. If it turns out to be too hard, maybe we'll just do this and and uh, that would be enough. Look what I did right there. I put an X through that because I'm trying to find the, the exact middle of it. Okay. If this was a square pizza and I just did this, I would have four exactly the same size slices of pizza so everybody could get the same amount if there was four people. This is the middle, so I know if I draw a parallel line which is vertical straight up through this line and I want this to go up above the horizon this is an imaginary line that is running from the peak of my roof down to the floor okay I'm checking my diagram make sure it's oh, I'm lining up with what I want you to do so you have that as a reference yeah just a little bit above the horizon this will help the drawing be easier for you to draw. And just bring down one side of the roof here, the other side here. And then go from the top of the roof line back to the vanishing point. And again, we need to make a parallel line, but this line is oblique. So I need even though it's oblique, I can still make a parallel line to it. It's just running the exact same way. There it is. If I clean all of this up now, when you do this kind of a drawing, you end up doing a lot of lines that don't show in the end, but you had to do them. It's just a way of getting there. I told you in the last one, if you ever have like too messy of a drawing, just take it up to the window and put your new paper on top of it and trace it and only trace the good ones that you want to keep okay good so in this in this example drawing I have like a road over here I'm gonna kick the road out a little bit because I don't want to step out of my front door right into the street you know when I'm going to get the, the new the newspaper or whatever the mail I want to open up the door and have a semi go blasting past and almost run me over. So it's over here. I move the ro the road over. Maybe I'll widen it a little bit. It's your world, you know. It's nice to be in control. Yeah, that looks better. If something doesn't look right, there's a reason why. So 
Don't settle for second best. Make a change. There we go. So, I want to do the same thing on the front too now. I'm going to make an X. Even though it's going away from me because of these orthogonals, the X still shows the middle, which is a beautiful thing. If I do that same imaginary vertical line that goes like this, it's interesting to notice how small this side is. Remember the pizza cuts. It seems like this person will get less pizza, but it's still the same amount of pizza because it's just getting smaller through uh, diminishment as it goes far away from you. This is how we as human beings read distance, you know, if something that we know is six feet tall like a man looks like it's only this big we know it's very far away that and because it'll look a little blurry and fuzzy and not as brightly colored and not as much contrast we know it's something that's far away you see people try to play with these rules when they like take a a picture and they go like this and something's really far away and they make it look like it's between their fingers they're playing with the rules of perspective whether they know it or not and creating an, an illusion. So I've wanted to find that middle because I want to put my front door right in the middle. I can use this point right here to divide my house into into halves. This is, this is going to be the top story. This is going to be the bottom story. And if I find a measurement by finding the half over here and it comes to this edge, I can steal it and use it on this side. It's still accurate. So that would be like the floor, you know, between your first and second stories. I don't know if you have a one or two story house or a three story house. Whatever you have, this one's a two story. I'm going to make the front door be here a little bit skinnier on this side and a little bit wider on this side. I'm just using uh, quick, quick judgment calls, you know, just like deciding, okay, this is where it's going to be. I'm going to take my best guess and then if I want to adjust, I can. It's the front door. This is going to be the sidewalk. This has got to be horizontal because the ground is horizontal here. You can see it kind of looks right. All right. So I don't need these anymore. Good. Clean it up. Everything's looking pretty good so far. I'm going to put in some windows. I'm going to choose to put them in over here to show you how these measurements line up and how you can steal them from, from one side to the other. So I know if I'm looking at the house and this is the bottom of the roof, the window doesn't usually come all the way up to the top of that. There's usually some space. And I'm going to draw the windows all the way across the, help, the whole house. Most houses don't do that. Some modern houses do. It looks pretty cool. But your standard house will have probably two windows or one window on the side like this. And I'm going to take these same measurements here. I have about this much space from the bottom on, since I cut this in half. So about that much and about that much from the top. I do that here. I'm not giving specific measurements because you'll, you'll find this on your own. This is a practice. Once I draw it, you'll say, oh, okay. So, there we go. I'm pretending for, for a bit that the windows do go all the way across. Just because I want the top of the window here and the top of the window here to be at the same place. So now I'm going to cut both of these windows off at the same time. I'll say, well, how wide should a window be? About that wide. <clears throat> Excuse me. Same distance here, over here, roughly. And then however wide this is. I got it about 5 eighths. I'm using the ruler this time. I don't have to measure it two times. I just keep my ruler vertical and draw it. That's all right. I could have fit three windows, but I won't.
Yeah, I could probably center these windows differently. That's good. Maybe I'll put like a scary window here. If you ever saw that movie, um, they would have like these the windows look like eyes up here, Amityville. I'm going to put that kind of a style window here. Just drawing that freehand just for fun. Just add a little bit of interest to it. So here we go. I'm going to find where the front of the house windows would be by stealing these measurements and taking them. So horizontal, vertical, now orthogonal. Anything on this side will be orthogonal because that's what's going away from my view. So I'm going to draw lightly like this, like this. Again, I have a super long window. I'm just going to use, again, my artistic ability to judge. That's about how far that window would be. It's about this wide, so I know it's going to be skinnier on the orthogonal side. And it's super skinny back here. It's got to look like it's getting smaller. See how I did. Oh yeah, it's pretty good. And now I'm going to put another one of those, um, and this is for the people that want to do more another one of those kind of windows it's like half of a wagon wheel I'm using the middle and then I'll put like an arc here I can still see where I mark the middle okay. it's pretty cool it's powerful you know it's like now I could draw a whole world you play video games and you might wonder Dang, how do they make the whole world look so convincing? Well, they're using two and three point linear perspective when they design. I put a little edge there. You can add whatever you want. Okay. So, let's see. I'll show you something cool and then, then I'll let you try and keep going. Like, don't give up if it doesn't work the first time. You can rewind the video, start all over again, crumple the paper up in a ball, throw it away, you know, or just flip it over. That's better. Don't waste paper. Um, but let's just say I wanted to remodel my house. I'm going to, I, you know what, I have a beautiful house, but I have nowhere to keep my Lamborghini and my Bentley, which I work so hard for. So I want to add a garage. I'm going to take these windows out. There's going to be a door there when I get it finished so I can come in. Alright, so I had to just change the batteries in my camera. Um, so I was, I was putting a garage onto my house. Now you don't have to do this, but I'd like to see you do something cool. Put on a deck or something. I'm like, look, there's lots of videos on how to do this. This is a universal thing. I'm showing you this way. This is a way I think is easy way to learn it. If you don't like my way or you feel like you're not picking up what I'm putting down, um, go find another video and, and get it from that and then do the house. I think I'm just going to ask you to draw a house that you make up. If you're adventurous or aggressive or you want to go for it, um, go outside and draw your own house. Or just go take a picture of your house and model your drawing after the picture you take. But how about this? You know, just be aware of the way perspective is working as you move around trying to find that just that perfect picture you want. It's like, oh look, when I look when I crouch down, the view changes. When I get up high and I stand on a hill, the view changes. Um, when I go to the left, when I go to the right, my eye is determining the way these orthogonals go. And this is how I'm finding my best scene. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the back wall of my garage. And this isn't a very good garage right now because if it rains, the water's going to stay right on the. I made a mistake there. The water's going to stay right on the roof. This line was here, we would have to go a little bit off the page. I want to keep it on the page, so I'm going to change the other line. Just lower the garage a bit. It doesn't have to be that tall. 
My Lamborghini is like real low profile, low to the ground. Um, I actually tried to fit in a Lamborghini once and it was way too small for me. Not that I could afford it. There we go. Better off in like a big Cadillac or something, plenty of leg room. So there we go. This is my two car garage and I'll find the roof line the same way. I could I could point the roof line like pointed here, but I don't think this is good construction because then water is going to run down towards the house. So I'm going to point the roof sloping the same way the, the roof of the house goes. I know it's only a drawing, but this is what I'm thinking of. So I'm going to put the X again. Although I could just measure it, you know, try to show you there's more than one way of doing it. It's three and a quarter, so I go one and a uh, three, one and three eighths. But the X is nice because you never have to measure or divide. And sometimes, like a measurement doesn't work as you're going, you're diminishing. There's a mathematical formula for it, but it takes too long. Same kind of arc there on this garage slightly less. Follow it back to the vanishing point. I know I'm just going to stop here. This is a parallel line. Just drag my ruler back. Okay. Tell you what, I'm going to draw more on this and then I'll come back. But I'm going to add some plant life and things like this. I would probably put a tree here. I can use perspective on anything. Humans, plants, animals, whatever. It's not necessarily not necessarily linear, you know, like a box or a cube like a house is. But I know that if this tree, say this is like a 14 foot Fraser fir right here, if I have the same exact size tree over here on this side of the house, it's only going to come up to here and it's going to look smaller. So I'm going to use these. It's, uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to draw a little bit more. I'll come back and show it to you and uh, that'll be it. And then I want you to turn this in. I'll ask you to put your name uh, on the file name like this Jason Nailitz LP Linear Perspective. Show you this when it's all done. Have fun. Lay on back and relax. Kick your pretty feet up on my dash. No need to go nowhere fast. Let's enjoy right here where we at. Who knows where this road is supposed to lead? We got nothing but time. As long as you ride here next to me, everything's gonna be alright. If it's meant to be, it'll be, it'll be. Baby, just let it be. If it's meant to be. So won't you ride with me, ride with me, see where this thing goes. If it's meant to be, it'll be, it'll be, baby, if it's meant to be, if it's meant to be. Oh, hold up, girl, don't you know you're beautiful? And it's easy to say, it is meant to be. 